In the vast expanse of the desert, where the sun beats down mercilessly and the winds carry whispers of ancient tales, there lies a challenge so grueling it has become the stuff of legends. The Dakar Rally, a test not just of machines, but of the human spirit. A race where the unforgiving terrain can break the strongest of vehicles and the scorching heat can wear down even the most resilient of souls. It's a place where sand dunes tower like mountains and navigation becomes a game of skill, determination, intuition, and luck. Many have tried to conquer this beast and many have failed, their dreams buried deep beneath the desert sands. But amidst the tales of despair and defeat, there emerged a vehicle born to win this grueling challenge, a symbol of endurance and engineering prowess, a vehicle that didn't just survive the Dakar rally, but dominated it leaving an indelible mark on its history. If you're enjoying this deep dive into the world of the Dakar Rally and the legendary Pajero, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more captivating stories like this one. The Dakar Rally, or simply the Dakar, is more than just a race. It's a ludicrous challenge, a true test of determination, endurance, and mechanical toughness. Starting in 1978, this annual off-road endurance event has become the ultimate rally raid race. Unlike traditional rallies on closed circuits or designated routes, the Dakar Rally covers thousands of kilometers across some of the toughest terrains in the world. Initially, the race began in Paris, France and concluded in Dakar, Senegal, giving it its iconic name. However, over the years, Due to various reasons ranging from security concerns to logistical challenges, the rally's route has shifted. Recently, it has found a new home in the diverse landscapes of Saudi Arabia. Functionally, the Dakar is unique. It's not just about speed, it's about navigation, strategy, and survival. Competitors, including motorbikes, cars, trucks, and even quads, have to navigate through various stages, each with its own challenges. These stages can range from vast open deserts with towering sand dunes to rocky mountain paths, dense forests, and even muddy swampland. Yup, swampland in the desert. Every day, drivers and their teams receive a roadmap with checkpoints to reach, but how they get there is mostly up to them. This element of open navigation is what makes the Dakar different from other motorsport events. Both drivers and machines face immense challenges. Drivers have to battle fatigue as they spend up to 12 hours or more behind the wheel each day. The intense focus needed to navigate and drive, along with the physical toll of the rough terrain, can be absolutely exhausting. Dealing with dehydration from the scorching heat is an ongoing threat, and the pesky desert sand can infiltrate engines, gearboxes, and other components, leading to plenty, and I mean plenty, mechanical failures. Machines, on the other hand, undergo extreme stress. The very terrains mean vehicles must be versatile enough to tackle deep sand dunes one day and rocky paths the next. The risk of breakdowns is high, and teams often have to conduct repairs in the field, battling against time and the elements. But what truly makes the Dakar unique is its spirit. It's a race where professional factory teams compete alongside privateers and amateurs. It's not uncommon to see a seasoned pro helping out a fellow competitor in need. Why? Because the course is unforgiving. Since 1979, 78 people died while racing. And if you do not wish to be one of those lost in the sand, you need a reliable machine under your fingertips. One that can withstand the relentless heat, navigate the treacherous dunes, and power through the most challenging terrains. Enter the Mitsubishi Pajero. The Mitsubishi Pajero, also known as the Shogun in other parts of the world, was a hell of a reliable vehicle. Its name, Pajero, comes from the Leopardus Pajeros, a wild cat from South America that represents agility, power, and elegance, qualities that perfectly describe this badass ride. The Pajero made its debut in the Dakar Rally in the early 1980s, and from the get-go, it was clear that this wasn't just any vehicle. It was a machine meticulously designed for the Dakar. First off, its design. The Pajero wasn't just built, it was crafted with the Dakar in mind. Its engine, a testament to Mitsubishi's engineering prowess, was tailored for consistent power delivery. With horsepower ratings often exceeding 250 horsepower in its rally versions, it had the grunt to push through the most demanding terrains. This power was complemented by a torque curve that ensured optimal performance, even in the low rev ranges, crucial for navigating tricky dunes and rocky paths. Ground clearance is vital in off-road racing, and the Pajero didn't skimp on it. 
With a clearance often exceeding 200 millimeters, it was designed to glide over obstacles that would leave many of its competitors belly up. This meant fewer hangups on rocks, deeper wades through water crossings, and an overall smoother ride in rough conditions. But perhaps one of its most defining features was its unique suspension system. While many vehicles struggled with the undulating dunes and the sudden drops, the Pajero's advanced independent suspension system, often featuring double wishbone setups at the front and multi-link rear suspensions, ensured stability and control. This system absorbed the shocks of the desert, allowing the Pajero to maintain higher speeds without compromising on safety or comfort. One thing that really stood out about the Pajero was how tough it was. With its body-on-frame construction, which is a must for off-road vehicles, it could really handle anything and just keep on going. Plus, it had a reinforced chassis, skid plates, and protective guards to protect all the important stuff from the roughest terrains out there. So here is a brief rundown of how the Pajero dominated the Dakar Rally over the years. Andrew Cowan, a name synonymous with motorsport excellence, was at the helm of the Mitsubishi Pajero during the 1983 Paris Alger Dakar Rally. A seasoned driver with a reputation for his impeccable driving skills and strategic acumen, Cowan showcased the Pajero's potential by clinching the top spot in its class. His mastery over the challenging terrains of the rally, combined with the Pajero's robust design, made for a winning combination. Cowan's victory wasn't just a personal achievement, it marked the beginning of the Pajero's legendary journey in the world of rally racing. Following closely was George Debussy, another stalwart of the rally circuit. Driving the same Mitsubishi Pajero, Debussy displayed exceptional skill and determination. Together, Cowan and Debussy set the stage for the Pajero's future successes, proving that Mitsubishi had crafted a vehicle capable of conquering the most challenging terrains and competitions. Their achievements in 1983 were the first of many accolades the Pajero would garner in the years to come. The Pajero's winning streak began in 1983 and continued with triumphs in 1992, 1993, 1997, 1998, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, and 2006. Each win was a testament to the vehicle's unmatched endurance, engineering prowess, and the sheer determination of the Mitsubishi team. Mitsubishi primarily competed in the modified production class T2 category, although they also had entries in the super production category and the T3 category. This category, which consisted of fully custom non-production vehicles, often referred to as prototypes by Dakar class criteria. These vehicles were tailor-made specifically for the Dakar Rally. Literally every part of them was designed with the grueling conditions of the Dakar in mind. From the ground up, these prototypes were built to endure the harshest terrains, from the scorching heat of the desert dunes to the rocky mountainous terrains. The engines in these vehicles were fine-tuned for optimal performance, ensuring that they could deliver consistent power even in the most challenging conditions. Special attention was given to cooling systems, ensuring that the engine wouldn't overheat during long stretches in the desert sun, and so on, yet the Pajero managed to hold its own even against such monsters. The T2 vehicles, on the other hand, were almost identical to the production models sold to the public with modifications primarily focused on safety and navigation equipment. Mitsubishi's dominance in the Dakar Rally is evident from their impressive record. They secured a total of 12 overall wins, first place, in the cars class, and achieved 150 stage wins. To put this into perspective, the next best record is held by Peugeot with 78 stage wins. Yup, almost double. This achievement earned Mitsubishi the title of Most Dakar Rally Wins by a manufacturer from the Guinness World Records. The Pajero's triumph in the Dakar Rally wasn't just because of its tough design and engineering. Mitsubishi's game plan included making vehicles that were perfectly suited for the rally's challenges. For instance, in the late 1990s, Mitsubishi introduced the Pajero Evolution, a rare road-going variant of their Dakar platform. This vehicle was designed with the sole intention of winning the T2 class, featuring independent rear suspension and a highly tuned engine. From 2002 onwards, with new rule changes allowing full prototype vehicles, Mitsubishi began their Evolution entries, which were vehicles designed exclusively for the Paris Dakar Rally. These vehicles boasted unique designs and engines such as the 6G7DID quad-turbo diesel 
and a 4-liter V6 petrol. 2007 marked a significant year for the Pajero. With the weight of its illustrious past victories on its shoulders, the Pajero entered the rally with high expectations. The competition was fierce, with rivals bringing in new technologies and strategies to claim the coveted title. However, the Pajero, with its unparalleled off-road capabilities and the experience of its team, managed to navigate the treacherous terrains of the rally with precision and speed. Battling through sandstorms, rocky paths, and the intense heat of the desert, the Pajero emerged victorious once again, clinching its final win in the Dakar Rally. While 2007 marked the end of the Pajero's winning streak in the Dakar, its legacy remains untarnished. The vehicle's numerous victories over the years stand as a testament to Mitsubishi's commitment to excellence and the Pajero's unmatched resilience and performance. Even today, the Pajero is remembered as one of the greatest champions of the Dakar Rally. We hope you enjoy diving deep into the incredible journey of the Mitsubishi Pajero in the Dakar Rally. What did you think? Were you as captivated by its legacy as we were? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your support means the world to us and we can't wait to bring you more thrilling stories from the world of motorsport. Until next time.